It feels actually rather strange not shouting down a microphone and actually speaking at a normal volume. But uh, first of all, can I welcome you today? Um, some of you have travelled a, a great distance and we're all really, really grateful that you've uh, taken time to make it here today. Um, yeah. We have, on the stage, we have obviously Rachel, Vicky, Adam and Simon, um, who will deal with a lot of questions that, we've, uh, that will hopefully come up today. But, in no particular order, we also have representatives um, from Bloodstock Bars, the Rock Society, the Signing Tent, Bloodstock Radio, VIP, um, and... Compared. And, yeah, me as compared, maybe. Would anyone like to ask the first question? question to each of you is, if you could personally have something as a rider for working at Bloodstock, what would your number one rider item be? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go on, you first. Um, uh, I don't know what my, my favourite, one, one of the funniest ones I got was uh, a rider came through from, shall we say, an extreme metal band, and they asked for lemon scented towels. That's, <laughs> there, there's an icebreaker for you. Um, what would I want? We gave you a rider. You did? Yeah, um, yeah which was lovely. <laughs> balloons. There you go. <laughs> a dressing room festooned with balloons. That's as good as you got. Jeez, um, how'd you follow that? <laughs> no idea. We did, have, we did have a story from a while ago. I think it was from the UNO that requested. Oh, don't bring me into this. No, no, no. They requested, was it a horse? Oh yeah, we've had that. Yeah. No, but yeah. this is for your rider. A donkey. You would have a donkey. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Or a stable chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I won the sweepstake on that one because I think I think it was about two minutes I I, I predicted it would take for that one to come on. Move along. Um, I'm going to be really boring and say. I would have bodybuilding equipment. Oh, I, don't, I would! Or You're something right, liver print or pink. You know, I'm very easily pleased, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel! I have absolutely no idea. For me... <laughs> oh. Oh, for me, I think it would have to be chocolate. Lots and lots of chocolate, because I'm just a total chocoholic, and I get a little bit angry if I don't have it. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Thanks for the question. You go, Rob. You're up, Rob. Okay. Um, yes. I was going to say the person wearing a black T-shirt with a beard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just wanted to ask, um, have any of the bands that you picked previously disagreed with where they've been on the bill? <laughs> now remember, hang on, we're being filmed. So just oh, be yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've just mentally edited that whole next sentence. Um... Yes, they have. Um, <laughs> I won't leave it to that. We had. Um, no, you've had it, eh? No, I, I have to be careful. I would say this. We've had bands that have said things like, um, and we had a particular band that was a special guest that said that the sky wasn't dark enough oh, yeah. for them yeah. to perform. <laughs> so these, and it was a, a you know a black metal band. <laughs> I'll leave it to your imagination. Who could be? And so we do get bands that say, oh, I'm not playing above them, we're bigger than them, we're not playing on the same day as... You do get that, because that is the nature of the beast. Um, things like the, the night sky are things that we can't really <laughs> change. Try it. And you always say to, you know, you're playing in, in summer, in August, it's going to be fairly light. light. But, you know, so you do get that. So, yes, we get it quite a lot, actually. Simon, do you want to put anything in there? I, I think on a, on a serious note, it's always going to be a consideration for bands and management. Um, that it's not necessarily an ego thing, it's just a thing that they like to be seen above certain bands, you know? That they've been, they've been touring for X amount of years, so they like to think that they're, you know, whether it sort of translates to where ticket sales are, we don't know, but, you know, that it does, it does materialise pretty much every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, next. 
Got a bit of a long trip here. No, don't strain yourself, Rob. <laughs> right, this is from the Bloodstock Metal Forum Facebook group. The most popular question we had was about queuing. As Bloodstock gets bigger, will the queuing system change and be expanded? <laughs> Rachel says no. no. <laughs> Rachel says yes. Yeah. Um, the, the situation is with the queuing, it's a compact site. So obviously for the entrance into the site, you have so many lanes. What we do find is everybody turns up really early. So even though the gates open at 12, we have people turning up a lot earlier than that. And obviously we have to prepare for it. Um, so we work with Showsec, who is our crowd management team. And they have to ensure that those lanes are fully flowing, but also that what slowed things down over the last couple of years is simply the um, searches that we have to do because of the climate we're now living in. So we need to, for your safety, ask everyone to kind of bear with us. Um, so it's not gonna change dramatically. We can add an extra lane, that is about it. Because if you go add any more than that, you're cutting into the um, infrastructure for the actual campsites, either side of the main walkway in. So it's a balancing act. We ask everyone to bear with us. Um, but there's not much more we can do because of the layout of the current site as it is. We have actually opened up the um, gates, as you know, the last couple of years, unofficially, a little bit earlier. And we will try and do that if the site's ready. And, and that reason is to get everybody in as fast as possible. So, you know, we, we do appreciate, I hate queuing more than probably most. So, you know, the quicker we can get you in, the better. But again, if you can help us doing that by bringing, you know, nothing dangerous, <laughs> no, well, yeah, no real swords or weapons of any kind. Rob? Okay. Yes. Um, just leading on from that, is the drop off point still going to be in the main car park? And if so, if um, you're temporarily unable to walk very far, could provisions be made to sort of be dropped off near the site? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we basically have the shuttle buses that are based in the main car park, so the drop-off point will stay in the same place. But we do have a policy that if anybody struggles to get the 900 metres to the site, which some people definitely do, um, then yes, you're more than happy to use a shuttle bus. Um, it's just, obviously, we, we've got to be fair to everybody, it's a bit of a way to walk if, if you do struggle. Hi, good afternoon. Um, a couple of points. Um, my first one's about the, um, the queuing that you've just mentioned there. I'm quite lucky because I live in Burton, so I turn up, I don't have any bags. And they still expect me to queue for however long to be searched. Uh, if we could have some sort of fast track thing for people that don't have bags, that would be one thing to reduce the number of the queue. Um, my other point is about purchasing tickets for things like the Rock Society. So me, like a lot of people in this room, we all work and, uh, and release the tickets at nine o'clock on a Tuesday morning is a bit impractical. So if you could move the ticket in to say six o'clock, seven o'clock, or at a weekend, that'd be great. I actually think you've got a very valid point there. And I personally don't see any issue us moving it to nine o'clock at night or when everyone's home and ready to press the button. Um, and Lisa sat in the front row who runs the Rock Society and she's nodding happily about that, so no problem at all. Um, on the first issue, with the um, fast track, it is something I will bring up with our crowd management team. The only thing I can think of the top of my head is that you're losing one of your lanes, which you need as many lanes as possible for the searchers, but I'll certainly bring it up with the team and see what we come up with. You're making a note, Good answer. Hi, um, would you consider women's only portalies? We can just leave you here, we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Do you know what, we'd consider anything. Um, if there was a valid reason, um, we'd look into anything. We did, sh we did look into the she didn't we? We did. Um, we tried a what? few years. she -winals. Shewees. She Shewees. Do you know what the she she we she are? The ladies, like kind of. Standing we probably don't up. need a description. Anyway, yeah, oh, we're going to detail. Um, so we we would look into anything if there was a, a demand for it. Um, yeah, you, you really have put me off guard on that one. So. <laughs> it's a pretty good question, though. Hands up if you think that that's something that perhaps we should be looking at. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Is that you saying that men are a bit dirty? Is that what it is? Yes. <laughs> okay. How to offend slightly more than 50% of the room. Who'd like the next question? It's kind of released on there. Are you going like, or are you guys having the mango cider back and the people with the backpack tent around the arena? I have so many people up. So what was the last bit then? The guys with the backpack tanks going around the actually by who are just walking around instead of the bar. Right next to you, Rob. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will be. <laughs> Can't get clearer than that. <laughs> 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 Don't try and scratch it out, will you, Anna? <laughs> okay. Going to the back. <laughs> um, it's actually a bar-related question as well. Um, I know that you guys managed to get non-alcoholic bar in the um, VIP area in the last couple of years, but is that something you might roll out into the main bars? Oh, yeah. yeah, no reason why not. Again, it's the same if there's a call for it, definitely. Alan, you know, he's the guy that can answer that one directly. There were also uh, a few alcoholic, non-alcoholic and non-alcoholic beers available in some of the main bars last year. The challenge is, is that we offer uh, a large range of beers across all the main, most of the main bars. And it does get lost in there a little times. What we've learned is we need to actually uh, highlight and sign it a bit better. Last year there was Heineken Zero, Erdinger Low Alcohol and Copperberg uh, No Alcohol Cider. So there was three there last year in all the bars, you just couldn't see it, which is my fault. So we need to meet us to sign it, basically. So we're now saying yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, you have a proper cardio workout. <laughs> it's about the only cardio workout I get. Oh, um, oh, my voice sounds horrible. I've not seen that. Daddy looks so good. <laughs> This would be brushing up as well. <laughs> uh, so as many people will know, um, the birthplace bus stops about a couple hundred yards away at uh, the assembly rooms and a few years back it burnt down to the ground. Um, the local council has said that uh, they're hoping to refurbish it by autumn 2020. Ah. I was wondering what you guys had. Uh, <laughs> I think my council tax didn't do it. <laughs> I wonder what you guys thought of actually hosting a sort of 20th anniversary bus stop back at the Hallow Grounds in 2021 to mark the 2001 to 2021. Yeah, I think a lot of that is down to you know the council doing what they said they're going to do in the timescales. No, they're, they're, they're honest and reliable. Um, <laughs> because it's being filmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for, for the film, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something to be fair. We have we have yeah. spoken about doing. Um, a, a particular type of show, yeah. and a lot of it that would, would fall down to, I guess, when that building itself is going to be ready. It would be the perfect place to do it. We have looked at other venues at the time, probably what a year or two ago, when we were talking about this. There was no sort of end, end game, if you like, for the um, assembly rooms. It's only been the last year or so that that has been the case. I went to a, a council meeting when they were doing the discussions around what they're going to do with it because they wanted to spend stupid amounts of money knocking it down and making the exact same building, um, which was kind of pointless. So now that they've opted for the refurb, the hope is they're going to get on with it at some point soon and, and get it done. And you know, when they do that and we've got some dates, then we'll have that conversation for certain. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. Hi there. Um, one thing I really liked about Blister was actually the matter to the matters side of the unsigned bands. Well, I mean, it's a great opportunity to actually get unsigned bands out there. The um, question is, how are the finals of the Metal to Matters actually judged to make sure there's a big range of bands there? And as there's a lot of bands that compete and really good ones, are there ways outside of the Metal to the Matters for unsigned bands to get involved in Bloodstock? Yeah, nice one. Um, how are they judged? <laughs> With a great amount of difficulty, to be quite honest. Um, what we do, for those that don't know about the Metal to the Matters, we open it up to promoters up and down the country. But not only that, we, we, we have promoters in Norway and Poland, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and yeah, um, a lot of it is competition based up until the point of which either myself or Rob or Lisa and Lee attend the finals. And then 
all genre, thoughts of genre go out the window. It literally is down to the performance on the night, um, which, as I say, makes it incredibly difficult because there is, whatever the media says, there is a lot of good bands out there. But whatever social media says, should I say, there's a lot of good metal out there right now. Um, so yeah, it, it's literally done on the performance on the night. Is that the only way? No, you can do CD applications, uh, you can do online applications in regards of sending me uh, an email, you know, your, your biogs, your you know, Dropbox link, whatever. <clears throat> we did have um, a video upload thing as well, but that's been sort of shelved for a year or so because we're not quite sure how that, that, that works really because is it a real sort of indication on how good the band is by having a really good video? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sold on it. Uh, but no, with regards to Metal to the Masses, it's, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger year on year. It's that when I took it over, which was 11 mm. plus years ago now, uh, there were four <coughs> venues, I believe. Now there's like 31, and we're in Oslo in Norway this year, and in Poland, and, Ireland. and Ireland, of course, yeah, which is a... If anyone gets a chance to go out to Ireland for, for, for the music scene, go and check it out, because Dublin is it's bonkers. It's really good, you know, and like their average shows for breaking bands, unsigned bands at, at, at late is like 150, 160 people every time, which, you know, if we could get that in venues up and down the UK, it'd be great. So, yeah, there's loads of ways in, mate, loads oh, of ways in. I'll send you a CD then. I thought <laughs> 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 that was good. That was All right, it's just a follow up to Metal to the Masses. Obviously, you've got all the unsigned bands playing on the unsigned stage, New Blood stage, but is there any way to let people know? Because you have the book on it, but it doesn't have anything about the unsigned bands in there. Is there like a sheet we could put out or a board to say what type of music they are? So then you know, oh, I might go and check them out, sort of thing. That's a good chat. That is a good chat. I mean, we, we do it on the, the Metal to the Masses official Facebook page. There's a sort of synopsis and a breakdown of every band, but not everybody's on that. So. Yeah, maybe that's something we can put on the official page as well. Yeah. She's taking uh, so, notes. Yeah. Who's taking Rachel notes? Rachel. Yeah, <laughs> if anyone ever takes notes, it's Rachel, trust me. Yeah. Um, but no, that's a great idea. Idea, Carl. We could, we, could, we could stick it on the main site. So once all the finals are done, um, maybe we could put an announcement out saying, right, here's your, your runners and riders for the New Blood stage. Even if it's just a sheet when you're there, sort of thing. Because obviously when you're, you, people might not have the time to check out every band that gets through. Yeah. But like when you're there, you yeah. might go up on, Oh, no band to watch today. Oh, no, they're the players. Good idea. Or like a, a signage point. Yeah, also, you know, that's a signage point. Like I think flight. sheets and leaflets and flyers, they're, they're all well and good, but they end up in people's back pockets yeah. and just don't yeah, end up. Outside. But like a, a signage board outside would be yeah, easy do to do. Yeah, but yeah, but the laminates yeah. give the name of the that's band, but it doesn't give a breakdown on what the band is, which I can do. Yeah? I'm going to hand this over as well to uh, Squatter for obviously Bloodstock Radio. Oh, sorry, yes, Bloodstock Radio. Yeah, so um, on Bloodstock Radio, we, um, as part of their sort of winning the Metal to the Masses, um, we interview every band that gets through and we play one of their songs as well on the show as well. So the idea behind that was basically, as you say, most people at the festival find the New Blood bands by sort of wandering past the tent. Oh, that sounds all right, I'll wander in. The idea of interviewing them beforehand and actually getting them to you know, say a few words and then playing a song of theirs is that so people will become familiar with them before the before the festival and when you're looking at your clash finder the same way that we all do at the festivals and sort of oh i want to see the headline the headline the headline and when you've got your gaps but if you're trying, if you're doing it that way by the time you get down to the to the bottom row of the of the new blood tent then you you're literally going to be well uh, i've already filled up all my gaps the idea with with playing them and, and getting them out there is that you might actually find a band that you like and actually put them on before you would put up your headliners and you look up there so you're actually filling your gaps the other way up, if you know what I mean. So every band, I think um, last year we managed to interview and get music from every single one of them. Um, we're hoping to do the same again this year. So, um, and we do cover the Mountains and the Masses every week on, on uh, Bloodstock Radio, which uh, a weekly podcast, hour long, goes on on Thursday night. And um, yeah, we have everyone sort of doing a sort of round the grounds in, around the country, just giving an update on heats and who got through and when the next heat is and things like that. So um, all the updates for that are on there. Uh -oh. um, also in the Rock Society tent, just because a lot of people don't actually visit us, they don't know quite what's there, every day we have a write-up of everybody who's on every stage, 
so that people can actually look and see if there's any bands there of a particular genre that they might like and uh, go along. So that's for everybody. That's not just for the Rock Society. That's always just on the desk along with all the signing times and along with all the running, running orders. So if anyone wants to come in and look at that, that is always there and it's been there for the last couple of years. So you can actually have a read through and identify one bands that you might want to go and see. And we're also, we've got a couple of people on the team who are really up on the bands that are playing and they'll talk to you about it as well if you want to kind of ask them. So, um, so that's in the rock sock. Sweet. On a quick side note, um, do, do you all attend the New Blood stage? I mean, stick your hands up if you do go in there. And <laughs> Cool, that's really good. Because, um, you know, the new, the new Blood is, I think it's, it's, it's pretty much what sets Bloodstock aside, as, apart from quite a lot of festivals, you know, in regards to giving New Blood a leg up. So, big up yourselves for, for going and checking those bands out. It means a lot. Well done. Hurrah. And certainly the bands really, really appreciate it. Um, we've had some questions that have been kind of sent in, um, and rather than doing them all at once, I've kind of uh, um, put them in one at a time. Um, this one has come from um, a female. Uh, the first time I went to Bloodstock, and then again the following year, there were Guitar Hero competitions. and. They felt that it was great entertainment, the prizes were generous, and that kind of stuff was one of the things that made Bloodstock different than any of the other festivals they'd been to. Uh, are there any plans for anything of that variety? Um, yeah, funny enough. We, we're looking at the minute of uh, different options of bringing in different levels of entertainment, because again, bands are great, and the markets are great, and the food stores, and the pay attempts, and everything else, but you're there for three or four days, probably you want to do something else, or have a look. And we've done, <coughs> last year we did movies, we've done comedy over the past. We're looking at um, some entertainment arenas at the moment as well to see what else we can bring in. And then a lot of that is down to, I think, logistics, space that we have, what we can bring in with, with certain partners as well that's going to sort of provide a good level of entertainment that's, that's offering a difference to all. So, yeah, just watch this space at the moment because there, there probably will be something coming, hopefully this year, we're trying to work on at the moment. Yeah, just to follow up really for that. Um, the movies last year were brilliant. I enjoyed it so much. Is it happening again this year? Oh yeah. Yeah, we we'll, we'll basically put out again the same sort of thing. What do you want to see? More bad news. Bad news for Castle Darling. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say that on mine? <laughs> yeah, well, obviously is there, you're going to put out a, a sort of poll of... Uh, yeah, um, possibly. There's, there's already a couple of films that are already sort of cemented in because we want to shoehorn them in. I would say that uh, definitely two on the Thursday, but I think we dropped the ball slightly with putting uh, two on the Friday and the Saturday. Reason being, um, the main stage PA won the battle. And people would like they were watching the screen but couldn't hear a damn word. So it might be just one on the Friday, one on the Saturday. Don't know yet. You never know. what shovel things around. But, uh... Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> uh, one of the things, a few of the guys I've been asking, are there any improvements to the site that have been made this year? If we get, say, another British summer, things like the entrance to the arena as you're going in, things like the the walkway between Ironwood and Midgard. They became your typical festival quagmires. Have they been improved at all? Um, yeah, I think uh, last year we, we did learn a lot and we work very closely with the landowner who does everything he can to prepare the land. Um, but one of the issues last year did actually sort of backfire a little bit, didn't he, when he put the um, holes through the, for the drainage? Yeah, what he, uh, he, he um, <laughs> we had previous years, as you know, with wet weather <coughs> and drainage is always an issue, so they try and prepare the fields for, for that eventuality. Nobody saw the summer that we were going to have last year, you know, which is great in, in one respect. We weren't as white as we usually are, um, you know, but in the other, the other area, obviously then putting in poles in the ground and things like that became an issue. The ground was cracking because of the, the drainage holes that had been put in, so again, that was an issue. They tried getting some equipment to irrigate the, the land uh, about a month or so before, but because of the summer, every farmer had that 
equipment out, so it was very difficult to get. So that lesson learned, yeah, exactly right. The landowner is keeping a close eye, as we are. I do, as you probably know through the uh, the post I've sent to put up, I do a site visits quite regularly to keep an eye on that, and then you know if we do see anything, we'll we'll try and act on it. Um, I know that a lot of other European festivals have the cup deposit scheme which really, really reduces the plastic waste that happens at festivals every year. Is this something that Bloodstock is going to kind of pick the penny up on and try? Way ahead of you. Yeah, we're already on it. Um, we, we're talking to uh, a few suppliers at the moment, we're looking at a few different options to do that exact thing this year. You know, one of the big focus points that we've got is to reduce plastics and it's, it's really important to us as it is to a lot of the European uh, and independent UK festivals as well. So. Uh, there's a big, big project at the moment going on, sort of certainly in the UK and across Europe, for that very thing. Um, we're going to see something in May, aren't we? I think where we're sort of having a look at a program to make sure that works. And if it does, it's something we hopefully get rolled out this year at Bloodstock. As long as that's again what the fans want, you know. But it, it, it's like us putting something out. It needs everybody else to sort of get on board with it and, and, and do it. So we're looking at that and we'll roll that out in advance of the festival, so everybody knows what the plan is. Yeah. Thank you. Going on from the thing about bad weather, camper van field, great when it's dry, if it's wet, is there any possibility of having tracking? Because we know from other festivals, getting out with a caravan, camper van, it's fun, you have to be pulled out by the tractor. So, any consideration for that? Uh, yeah, again, we'll look at that. We, we're constantly watching the weather forecast um, leading up to the festival, so we always have a contingency that if there's any issues with the, the weather, then yes, we'll make sure that there is support in place. Um, there's only physically so much trackway we can actually have available on site. Um, bear in mind there's a chance we're not even going to use it, um, but yeah, we, we are aware that you've got heavy vehicles, so you need to get those out. Just on, on that though, well, one thing we are very lucky at with where the site is, it's, it's on top of a, effectively a gravel quarry. So the drainage at Bloodstock is incredible. And, you know, I've, I've I must have been about four or five years ago when we had that torrential rain. I did a, did a site check three, four weeks before the event. Mm. I was in the arena and the water was up to my knees in the arena. The following Friday, and this was on the Tuesday, the following Friday, there wasn't even a puddle. You know, it, it, it soaks away so fast. So we're very, very fortunate that I'm never going to say that won't happen, but it, it would need to be pretty, pretty bad for us to need that eventuality. But as Rachel says, we will keep a close eye on it. Would you consider doing a mentoring programme for the younger people? In what regard? As in like tech in or guitar tech. Other festivals in the UK do it. I'm just wondering whether Bloodstock would consider it. Yeah, I would. I would, I'd, I'd, you know, as, as long as they're of age, you know, 18 plus, then yeah, I'd, I'd certainly think there's, there's possibility, isn't it? Yeah, Bring someone into the team. Because I run production for the Jaeger, the New Blood and the Sophie. Um, and certainly I think we could, we could bring someone into the team. Yeah, why not? Why, you, you apply? Yeah, it'd be interesting. <laughs> I thought you might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll talk. Yeah, no worries. We do, we do actually have um, people that do come through from emails that we receive that do want to get some on-site experience and, and our production team. I think Simon's done in the past, Paul, who do looks after the main stage, he's had people on the lighting teams in the past as well, and on the stages. So we do take people on when they come in. We probably don't go out there and say, apply. That's probably where we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. So going on from the um, camper van and the caravan field, uh, we're representing the Facebook page uh, for Vanaheim, for the, for the camper van field. And it's great that your members on there, so you can see the feedback uh, that people are giving, all the members on there have given their feedback from last year. But what I'd really be interested in is to see what your thoughts have been on moving the field across the road. How do you guys feel that that move has gone? Well, from a logistical issue in relation to freeing up more space on the opposite side of the road for camping, yes, it's worked really well. Um, we do monitor very closely from your guys to make sure you're happy. And we, we took on loads of comments that you know you put to us in advance. And we did went to the site and we did a recce. And then we kind of posted it out on Facebook, if you record, to yeah. say, look, this is what it all looks like now. So um, we think it's working really well um, because it's keeping the big vehicles on one side of the road. We've got a pedestrian crossing, which is safe. It's manned 24-7. Um, we're always listening to any issues you do have and if there are any issues we'll address them literally straight away not after the event if we know about them at the event we'll deal with it there and then 
Just on that as well, I mean, one of the things that the council insists on is, is minimal road crossings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they want as, as few people as possible to physically be crossing that road, certainly late at night. If we put tents on the other side of the road, the potential is you're going to get a lot more people at that point using the crossing mm -hmm. 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, a bit worse for wear. Whereas I think if you're putting the camper vans there, as well as it's a good drainage field, but it's also a minimal amount of people, hopefully, with movement. So it's it's... Ideally, you'd want everybody parking right next to the main stage, camping next to the main stage. That would be brilliant. You know, what a festival that would be. But we try, we try and manage it as best as we can to suit everybody. And, but as Rachel said, rightly so, we listen to all the comments and we'll try and feedback where we can. Yeah, I've been going to Bloodstock since 2001 when it started. And um, I was just curious as to what roles you had back then. And did you ever see it becoming, you know, starting as this sort of small thing with, you know, about 600 people growing and then growing into this great huge beast of what is it now 18,000? Yeah, yeah. it is now. Did you ever foresee that coming? No. 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 It's like anything I guess you know we all no. hoped and wanted it to be. Um, you know Paul sitting in the front row here um, sort of quite unassuming sort of had that passion that you know he, he believed strongly in what the festival was about and, and what the passion was and wanted to see it succeed as was the sort of the whole idea behind Metal to the Masses and, and finding that new music. It, it's all about bringing in the right people in that have got that same level of passion that want to do something for the love of what it's about rather than just always, you know, it's a financial win, which it, you know, it, it isn't. You know, as, as people think, you know, we're all sitting here multi millionaires. We wish. Um, well, the thing is, well, it's about what we did as roles, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, back then, I mean, I, I, I like the others sort of say what they used to do, but <laughs> we, we were generally doing anything and everything. You know, and I was, I was ferrying bands. I always remember Taj being in the back of the. Um, my car, taking it to the hotel with a, a partner, and, and you're running around doing any job that needs to be done. And we still do. I mean, I've, I've been out there yesterday, oh sorry, last year, you know, cutting a lock off, a pa you know, padlock off with a grinder and, and fixing the fencing. And, you know, it's, it's, if it's your own event and it's something that you believe in, we're fans as much as anybody else. And we, the detail is, is us very, very important, but I'll pass on the other what I used to do. I mean, Rachel and I, Rachel will back me up on this, we used to sell the merch for the indoor. So if anybody ever went to the indoor, literally that was our role. Yeah. And it kind of also shows as well that nobody, I mean, I can't speak for Sarge. I wasn't there. But uh, nobody <laughs> of us were actually doing, we weren't in the music industry. We weren't doing yeah. anything. It was like kind of fake it's it till you make it sort of thing. And just, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's our dad's fault, basically, you know. We didn't have uh, a clue then and we don't have a clue now. No, basically, that's right, yeah. yeah. We're winging it still 18, 19 years later, aren't we? Yeah, uh, and just to kind of be clear that when we did go into it, it, it literally was a bit of a deer in the headlights. We were so, love the music, love the scene so much, and to actually be on this side of the fence to see everything, from, we learned literally every single event, we learned something new, we tripped over ourselves, we made mistakes, and that's what it is all about, it's life, you just, you know, but we're just all so passionate about yeah. it, aren't we? Yeah. And, and ultimately, it is down to the fact that those 700 people turned up in the first year, and then the next year it was 1,200, and the next year it's two and a half thousand, and then it's like, oh my God, this is, and it's down to you guys that come to the festival that kind of has kept the momentum and built it to the level it's at now, which, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I think when you go back to 2001, I mean, the reason Paul started 2000 is there wasn't anywhere. Monsters of Rock had finished, there were no real sort of rock festivals, it was all the, the common stuff that people tend to listen to on the radio. Um, you know, so putting on Bloodstock was again more of a belief in, in what Paul wanted to do than it was, I guess, anything else. We all said probably no. You know, we, to be honest, we, we, we were sort of probably fighting against it as everybody else was, but when you, you live with, you know, my dad, it's, uh, you don't get a choice really. <laughs> and actually, there are a couple of people on the front row who, who have been working uh, for Bloodstock since 2001. Um, Lee, who works obviously in the, uh, the Rock Sock. Um, he was actually manning the, the signing, the signing tent, um, and he, his responsibility was Paul's paintings. He used to have to guard those with his life, and, uh, and still does from time to time. Um, but myself, um, I started working um, in the dressing rooms. Literally, it was putting, putting towels uh, in the dressing room, sorting out drinks riders, um, and I was brought in because I spoke fluent German and they wanted somebody to look after primal fear. And that was simply why uh, I ended up 
working for Bloodstock, and here we are all those years later. And uh, I think we all still love it, don't we? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so. I oh, actually had hair as well when I started doing this. <laughs> I remember that, it didn't save you. Longer than your time. Again, it's a follow on from that question. Um, obviously, there's an immense amount of work that goes into organising a festival. Is that your day job, or do you have day jobs? For the first few years, we all had full time day jobs. Um, probably about three and a half years ago, I went on to Bloodstock full time, um, quite simply because I was sick of my day job, and it was it was you know a natural progression. Literally in the last two weeks, mm -hmm. Rachel's now full time, and this is going into year nineteen. You know, Vicky still has a full-time day job. Uh, you know, Simon has a, has a... What do you do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure myself. He does stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he makes candles. Have a look at the candles. Oh, I love it. Um, but yeah, so, it, you know, it, it's, it was a labour of love. It was working weekends and evenings for, for pretty much all of us, yeah, yeah. you know, until getting from your day job at sort of six o'clock, have something to eat, and, and literally at that point then you, you sort of go through until you finish. And our partners at the time, certainly in the, early, in the early years, hated it with a passion, hated it, hated us. You know, for, for the time we were at the event, you know, what, what are you doing it for? It's never going to be anything. There was a, there was a, a, a sort of yeah. disbelief to a degree from some of them in the early years. And it was only sort of as it started to gain momentum, I think that we sort of, uh, you know, got the, the support in, you know, in, in unequivocally. There was always that worry of, of you know, what's just going to cost. But, um, you know, they all stuck with us, thankfully. Hi guys, um, my question is about the disabled platform. Is there any chance you can make it big? Because when it comes during the day, it's fine. You know, I can get space on it. But when it come, comes to headliners, it's chop up, mm. and then I have to miss that band. And it's like that's not it's a bit unfair. Pick up on the, the bit at the front. In fact, we're minimum, mm. changing the amount of people going there, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, it, it is frustrating because um, the, the the layout of the arena is such that you have to, um, it's a triangle of space to make sure that everybody has a view of the, the, the main stage. Um, you have a, a triangle to make sure that everyone can get into that triangle. So there's a capacity that you have to work for when you actually do the layout. So with the actual disabled platform, we physically make it as big as we can. Um, but because the attendance to the festival has increased as well across the board, it means that the further we bring that disabled platform out, the further out you're pushing everybody else as well. So what we did last year, and we're going to continue to do this year, which probably wasn't publicised as well as it could have been, is we also had a safe zone at the front of the, the stage itself. So for front anybody... Oh, sorry, front of house, yeah, sorry. So for anybody that didn't necessarily need to be sat down but needed to feel that they were in a safe environment, they could stand in that safe zone to free up space for people at the back. Um, but also we're going to uh, make sure that with security this year, we work with those people that need to be on the disabled platform genuinely um, for as long as possible to get the best view. So those that maybe could stand up can stand at the front on the safe zone. Those that need to be in wheelchairs or physically have to sit down because of their disability, we will work with them to make sure that we can get you on there as much as we can. Okay. There's not actually one band question yet. This is so brilliant. Vicky's feeling really, really yes. let down. That's <laughs> good because I've got a band question. Oh no! Is there anybody you've wanted to book down the years, but for some reason the stars haven't aligned you, just not been able to get them? <laughs> None of all. None of all. Just and it's be nothing to do with the stars no. aligning. Isn't it more to do with the stars? Um, yeah, maybe the stars. Maybe just the stars. Um, a lot of bands over the years that for one reason and we're not just talking about headliners i mean everybody knows what we put into booking bands it is a nightmare because if you think you're logistically trying to get bands that work not just when bloodstock's on these bands are thinking of touring cycles album cycles we're not the only festival in the world that's after them there's festivals in the summer all over the world so there's so much that, that brings bands into a certain time period as to when they're playing. And there are still bands that have gone completely out of my head now that I know that we, for whatever reason, have never had a bloodstock that we have desperately wanted year on year. And there are bands I know that I've been going after four, five, six, seven years, and it still hasn't worked. Uh, I'll definitely bring in the orchestra and the choir. 
Oh, who, sorry? Demi. Demi Poggio, are they bringing the choir and the orchestra? Um, I believe oh, they yeah. are, yes. They are. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And you'll be the first to know that, because we've obviously not publicised any of that either. Good so question. shush. So shush. <laughs> <laughs> if you've tweeted that, delete it. <laughs> so, hands up for band related questions. Oh, yeah. In past years, you've had a big new wave of British heavy metal name very often on the bill. Yeah. Not seeing so much of that this year so far. It, again, it's down to certain bands' availability. I mean, we, Simon brought me up on this. We go through, there's a team of us that go through the bands, the availability. Um, we also do get bands that say no. Because, you know, it's not just their availability, they want to do another event or another festival. I think people presume that because we've offered on a band, they'll come and play Bloodstock. We do get bands that just, for whatever reason, say, no, I don't want to do it, I want to do something else, or, you know, it's not right for us, or they're in the studio. So people sometimes often say to me, well, why is there no, you know, British heavy metal, or why is there no power metal? And they think it's like we've gone out to ignore that particular genre, which we don't. It's just, you know, the availability, and we do try and keep it as mixed for all the festival as we can. Diamond Head were the last ones, weren't they? Am I right in saying that? You've had Satan, Blitzkrieg, yeah. you know, yeah. some big names. I mean, Diamond Head at the moment are really... That really new great. album's brilliant. Yeah, yeah it's very, very really good. On, on it. Yeah, it is, it is a consideration, as Vicky says. We, we certainly look at it year on year. Yeah. And it is, it, it is a case of who's touring, who wants in, and whether it's viable with the, with the balance of the lineup as well. Yeah. That's There's some yeah. crackers out there, Grim yeah. Reaper at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Really, really yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing is, as well, is we, we are always open to people throwing ideas. Because you're not going to remember every band, no. you know. And sometimes it's a case that we chase bands as opposed to waiting for agents to come to us, you know. So, yeah, Crim Reaper, good idea, man. Yeah. Well, we're already on to 2020, so. Yeah. Um, so, with the booking of bands, do you find it quite difficult to balance between the sort of more established acts and the more up-and-coming acts? and how do you sort of get that balance right with, with who you're booking for the festival? I guess the main stage is the ticket sellers. That's, that's you know, you've got to be pragmatic about this. The, the main stage is the ticket sellers. New Blood isn't. And then in the middle, you've got the Sophie stage, which this year there's probably a lot more ticket sellers than we've had in the past. You know, when you look at bands like Grand Magus and Alluviate, et cetera, et cetera, it's, 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 it's heading in the right direction. But yeah, there is always a balance. Um, I think we get it right, nine times out of ten. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, the, the, there is always the, you know, the, the value of the band in respect to sales, but, and also getting the balance right. You know, so there's, there's plenty of bands that we've booked, haven't there, that haven't got huge sales, but we know they're going to work at the festival. Mm. And it's also bringing up those bands as well that need to be elevated to that next level. Yeah. You know, it's, it's working with, with net, you know, tomorrow's bands because a lot of festivals don't do that. They'll work with, that's a ticket seller, that's a ticket seller, you know, get as many people through the door. You've got to nurture bands and, and sort of work with them for, for years. We've done that with Kajira, we've done that with, you know, lots of other bands where they've started early mid-card on the bill and they've elevated throughout the years. We've done that with, uh, you know, other bands. Sabaton, 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 we've done it with. You know, where it's a progression. And, and I think it's good to see that as well. It's healthy for the, for certainly for our genre of music. And to a lesser degree as well, or a, a lower card degree, you've had bands that have come from New Blood, uh, bands like Cambion, uh, they went through, you know, and you've got bands like Evil Scarecrow. You know, look at them now. They're, mm -hmm. they're doing really well. Granted, they never did Metals and Masses, but they did New Blood, etc. through through that door. So, yeah, you've, you've got bands like Crystal you know, uh, former Gutworm members, etc., etc. I mean, they're opening the main stage on the Saturday this year. They played Sophie previously. I first saw them headlining a Metal to the Masses final, um, you know, just as guests. And this year we've got bands like, I mean, we've got, uh, we've got Vader, Electric Eel Shop. We've got bands of that level now that are headlining Metal to the Masses shows, which I never thought was going to be the case sort of back in the day. So, yeah, it's all about progressing those bands through, definitely. And, it, and it's the fans as well supporting that. Of course. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing. We can do whatever we want to do, but it's down to, to you guys that, that come along and, and sort of stand in front and watch them and give them an opportunity. And I think that's the big thing is, is we can get so lost in, I like band A, I don't like band B. You know, give band B a listen. You probably haven't seen them. And again, buying the album or, or seeing them on a, 
at the TV or something, it's a different life, it's a different performance with a lot of bands live, you know, that we've all seen. You can, you know, I've, I've listened to bands over the years, seen them live and been blown away. You know, I've listened to them on the, on the, the radio or on, you know, CDs or whatever, and it's, it's been, yeah, it's okay. But it's, it's all about the performance, you know, and that's what a festival is. It's not just playing the music, it's a performance and it's a show. You know, you don't see the pyro and everything else that you, on a CD that you'd see, you know, live. It's that, it's that experience. And we all want to try and generate that I was there moment. You know, and, and, and hopefully, you never know when that's going to be, but you just need that one band to go, wow, that was amazing. You know, and that's what we take away. Um, there was a big controversy online around the announcement of Parkway Drive. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people... Oh, you went there, did yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people said that they weren't going to come, they were going to go to like download or Hellfest instead. So how do you like react to that? Um, they also said they'd go to Brutal Assault. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, the funny thing was, yeah, they were all going, oh, we're going to Brutal Assault, and then Brutal Assault announced about three weeks later, which I thought was amazing. Um, it goes with the territory. And this sounds an odd thing to say, we knew it was going to be a bit of a out there booking. I kind of don't understand why, because for anyone that has listened to any of the last two, three albums of Partway, they are as heavy as hell. They are one of the best live bands you could possibly go and see. For the festival to maintain bringing in those bands that you don't often get to see, we have to have bands like Partway bring the fans in, bring people in. Um, Bloodstock is never going to maintain its longevity, it's never going to have the ability to bring in these other acts that you want to see, the ones that are not heard of, that we do, I mean we put bands on the main stage, second, third, fourth from headline, that a lot of festivals wouldn't even put on their third, yeah. fourth stages. So we give those bands huge profile. Um, yes, the Parkway Drive announcement, I thought some of the reactions were a bit silly, if I'm honest, and I kind of thought, I was a little bit embarrassed for some people's reaction to a band, um, but I think we've all learned over 20 years, it goes in the territory. They're going to be amazing. And what always happens, just so you know, whenever we have a band, we had this with Hatebreed, or oh, we've had it with so many bands, Europe. we've had it with Europe, I mean I got death threats when we announced Europe, and people, <laughs> just so you know, people do take this shit that seriously. But I did apologise. Yeah, you did apologise, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> do take it this seriously that you've ruined their life if you dare announce a band that they don't like and I've never got that because I've thought well go to the bar go get some tweet go play on the dodgems for a bit go do anything else if for that hour it's that bad you know it, it, there's so much more you can do so and we're always going to get it so you think that the partway drive thing is a one-off no it's every year I think the thing is, what is the perfect lineup? You know, and, and as Vicky just said, then no matter who you announce, there's going to be a controversial one in there for some people. Yeah. You know, and I think it's that. That's what we're trying to get. Is we're trying to get a lineup that is balanced overall. Yes, there'll be a band that isn't your cup of tea. So all we're saying is, if you don't like a band, you don't like it. We're not saying you have to, but if you're unsure, or if you're going on, I guess the, you know, following the crowd because there's a lot of very vocal people around, give them a go. Mm. You either will like them or you won't. I distinctly remember when I started the uh, Metal to the Masses, some, well, when I started doing it, every other band was a metalcore band. And every other band was doing drop downs, every third verse, and you could, you could script it. You knew what it was going to be. If you actually listen to them, I'd, so I, I kind of get the sort of angst towards metalcore. I do get it. However, if you listen to the latest, they're not metalcore anymore. Not even close. The last couple of albums are, are actually straight up heavy metal. It's just brutal heavy metal. So yeah, in that regard, I, I understand the vitriol towards it, but I don't get it, if you know what I mean. I remember um, a couple of years ago when we first bought Hatebreed, I remember standing on the, um, on the crowd barrier at, at the main stage with Alex Milas, who was um, editor of Metal Hammer at the time, and we were looking out, and we just saw a crowd of kids in corpse paint freaking out to hate breed and I was like, I bet you they were the buggers online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the fact of the matter is it's all about you know, it is you know, again it's about the that live that live show, that experience, that I was there moment. And live music gives you all that. 
and you know, and I, I think that's that's the main thing you can take away from from putting on a festival is about that live experience. And you know, I think you'll find you know for those that don't quite get part way, just give it a, give it a go because I think you'll I think you'll love it. Over the years as organisers, there's ever been bands you've booked couldn't wait to see and then miss them because you had to deal with something. Most oh, yeah. every yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. Every Most year. Um, yeah, I, I think I saw about three bands in their entirety last year, which, you know, when I look through the lineup, absolutely guts me. Missed Mr. Big. Sorry, I was looking forward to that. Didn't I didn't see it. it. I didn't see it. Yeah, I think we've all, everyone's got that, that sort of band that we've missed. I think last year, I mean, I've been, we've been very advocates for, for sort of Priest for, for so many years. We wanted to get Priest, we got Priest. I saw two songs, you know, Radio Core went and you're off, you know, and I think everybody has that moment, and it's shit. But, you know, it, 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 it's been honest, it's a bit crap. Yeah. But we, we then, you know, luckily we record it so we can see it afterwards. <laughs> what a lot of people probably don't realise as well, this is how lazy we are, is that Adam and I and Rachel are often watching, when we've had it live streamed and things, we actually sit watching it in the office on the telly when we were at the festival. <laughs> so we're like sat there with a muffin in the chair going, this is good, isn't it? And it's like out there. <laughs> um, I also wanted, there was one thing when we had Alan and Marth play, I really wanted to see them do the biking um, rowing. You wanted to do it? Yeah, I wanted to do it and everything. Um, my husband dragged me away to do something really that I didn't need to do right then. So when I came back, I missed the whole rowing. <laughs> I was so angry. But, there's, but we never get to see, I mean, we probably watch over the weekend four so. bands, yeah. maybe five. Mm. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's not it's that good. And we're not doing anything good either. We're doing <laughs> really crap stuff usually, you know, it's, it, from wherever it may be, that something's happened that we've been called away to. So it's usually not, oh, go and see this person, they really want to meet you, or, you know, it's a superstar. No, not even close. The toilets are blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've all got a plunger. <laughs> yeah, I just want to go back to Man of War. Is, it, is there any truth that they actually asked for the festival to be renamed? <laughs> Are we allowed to answer that? Yeah. Tell the truth. Go on. I, don't know, I don't know how much I can tell here. Rachel's like, oh, she's saying no. <laughs> Rachel says she's no. Saying no. Um, we can't deny it. Yes. <laughs> we can't deny that. I will say that the, the requests that they have... Magic. So. Mag yeah, yeah. They ask for a hell of a lot, that band. And a lot of it is completely no. I mean, not only Rachel says no, we all say no. Um, they've asked for, they, their demands are insane. So that probably shows why they don't do many festivals. Um, I was told by Man of War that we wouldn't have to worry about ticket numbers because if they came, everybody would come. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I oh, will also point out as well, we, we interviewed Evil Scarecrow on, um, on, on Bloodstock Radio and uh, their plan is to have the festival and every stage named after them by the time they, <laughs> <laughs> you know, over the next 10, 15 years, that is their plan. Everything will be named after them. That is All completely the bars. feasible. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the Dr. Hell car park, my <laughs> yeah. Okay, be with you. When you say they, you mean he. Is there any band that you guys have booked over the years and it has actually got to date and then really wish you hadn't? It's not necessarily we'd never have them back, but one band that frightened the livid bejesus out of me was last year. Mm. Wu Tang. <laughs> I swear to God. That, well, I won't swear to God because you know not <laughs> But I tell you what, they were they were lovely guys. But a they stunk, mm. and b they stunk, <laughs> and the flames in the Sophie stage because I was overseeing that, and I've never been so scared of a gig in my entire life. <laughs> it was bloody terrifying, but it was brilliant all the same. It was a great show. Um, so yeah, we'd we'd have them back every time. But I'd like to push them onto the main stage. <laughs> it's all the same. Running after the propane van as well. Oh yeah, yeah. We ran out of gas. <laughs> you didn't notice, but we ran out of gas. Yeah, that was fun. I'm quite glad I watched retain from the back. 
Are any of the bands you booked for this year bands that have been on that I've wanted to get them for ages list? Yeah, I mean, I've, the lineup's completely gone out of the head. Simon, did you think? Metal Church. Yeah. I've wanted to see Metal Church for a long time. I mean, there's bands every years. year that we book that we've been trying to get for years. Or ones that, you know, and still bands now that, you know, we've never got. But yeah, 100%. Hi hypocrisy as well. Oh, yeah. I've not seen them. Well, I haven't seen them yet, so I'm looking like it. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's a great band. Hypocrisy, Metal Church. Yeah, good acts. I think it's difficult because you're trying to bring in, you know, a new lineup every year that's probably not been seen before. You know, it's hard to do. So you do have repeats of, of bands. But when, again, when they come back, you want them to bring. What are you going to do different? You know, yeah. what's, what's going to be the new showing? That, that's always hard. That's, that's a question I'd throw out to you. Repeats, does, does that bother you? No. Sort of two years, three years down the line, is it, is it, is it an issue? No? No. 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 There's some sort of progression. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. agreed. If, they, if they're just doing the same set list over and over again, then probably not. Yeah. 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 To justify it, to make it, yeah, yeah. make it again one of those I was there moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Just a question then throwing this back out to everybody else. So if we were to bring another headliner back, who would we bring back? Ghost. Ghost, yeah. Ghost. 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 Okay. So I can hear all these. Rachel's making notes, aren't you, Rachel? Mentally, yeah. Because <laughs> it's just interesting, obviously, on the headliner side of things. It's not, you know, it's not just headliners, but how soon is too soon to bring a band back? Um, but I think it's like what Jack was saying there, you know, if there's a different set yeah. something different about the band that's coming back then it's something you need to probably yeah. do if they, yeah, yeah. if they were a good band that, and, and new products as well yeah yeah new products a big thing yeah okay cool have you ever found a completely trashy dressing room yeah, yeah. 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 how many yeah. the holder <laughs> <laughs> You trashed it before I got oh, in. Oh, we did, yeah. Yeah, we have, yeah. Yeah, we have. It's Can't in the say. book. <laughs> it's in the book. Um, I, I, I think because it's being filmed, it'd be really cheerless to actually come out with names. But yeah, yeah we, we wouldn't have. come out with names. Yeah, yeah we have had naughty people do that. Can I mention, back at the assembly rooms, there was a, a band who were finishing their world tour. Their last show was a slot of Bloodstock, and I had to clear them out of their dressing room. I had to throw them out of their dressing room and then I had to tidy their dressing room, which must have taken a good hour and a half uh, because I don't think I've ever seen so many bottles of spirits, bottles of beer, and um, bottles of wine there. But uh, yeah, again, that will all go in the book, I guess. In the wall. Okay, Amy. Um, it's on a similar subject actually, um, not so much bands misbehaving but just bands backstage with shenanigans and ridiculousness that really stick out in your memory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gua. <laughs> right, so we got the call, literally yeah, this thing, a van full of frantic guys that were stuck on the A50 or whatever it was going, we're going to get there as soon as we can, and we were watching the clock, and it was really nip and tuck as to whether they'd make it. Anyway, they were at the top of the track, we start to sell a rap. I don't know if anyone was there for the Gua show, but we had to sell a rap, all the monitors. Oh, God. It was, it was a nightmare. But then their truck literally backed up onto the ramp at the back, and the tail lift come up, and all I saw, and I was in, I was in absolute bloody hysterics, was prosthetic cocks and <laughs> spunk cannons and fucking all, the, all this nonsense going up in the air and these guys getting dressed on the ramp they never even made it to the dressing room and they literally <laughs> ran out the van and, and, and ran on stage so yeah those guys were you know cool breasting I mean, they were bloody hilarious yeah they were good they were good backstage who else we had I'm just shutting up uh, yeah most of them have been pretty well behaved yeah. 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 <laughs> Next question. Moving <laughs> <laughs> on quick. I think it's well when the when um, the bit of the mic. I can't hear. 
Because the one thing that nobody sees, it's like seeing a swan kind of gliding across the, the river and then underneath the feet are paddling like crazy. And the one thing we have to give kudos to is the crew, because when we have a band that turn up with no luggage, because it's all got lost at the airport, they've got Devin, Devin. Devin Townsend. Devin yeah. Townsend, so yeah. they have no guitars. Yeah, and we had to like, the, the crew were amazing. They had to unload the gear off the stage and what did they have, 10 minutes or something like that to get the whole set ready? And it was, a story. it was incredible, wasn't it? Who was there the first time Devin Townsend played on the main stage? Yeah. That, that for me was one of the seminal moments of hilarity. Not only because it's Devin Townsend, <laughs> but he rocks up and he's got no guitars. The only thing he's got is his laptop, which he's got all the samples on, and the click track, right? For those of you that are into music, a click track is literally what the rest of the band are hearing. So it's like tick tock, tick, so they're all keeping in time, okay? But Devin's is ever so slightly different. It's just full of profanity. And, <laughs> and the problem was they didn't have their in-ear monitors, so it all had to come through the monitors front of house. Uh, sorry, on the, on the stage. So there we were, stood at the side of the stage. Devin's laughing his head off because he knows what's going to happen. And I'm not going to go into what it actually says, but it's just tick tock, tick tock, Devin sucks. And it, it just goes on. To, and it just goes on and on like this. And of course, the band have heard this a million times, but everyone stood at the side of the stage. It's just an absolute uproar. So, yeah, Devin, you know, an absolute legend on many levels, I think you're fine. Including click tracks. Hi, guys. Um, just following on from that about stage production and things as well, I want to point out is what time do you start looking to speak to bands about the, the production of their stage show? So things like obviously we sat a time a few years ago, the tank on stage, get all the logistics of getting all that stuff sorted out. How, how long does that take you? When do you liaise with the bands about that? With the bigger bands, I mean, Vic will tell you this, with the bigger bands, it's, it's actually prior to booking. Mm. It's actually prior to confirming because with some of them, they want so much. You know, the, can we logistically put it in backstage and front of stage? Um, I know Sabaton are bringing a lot. I know Parkway are bringing a hell of a lot. And I know the Scorpions are bringing pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, like Ghost, they just bought all their stuff and didn't show anybody in the, you know, all yeah, the backstage. Of course. Right? Yeah, because of course with Ghost, we had to not only supply all that, that ramping at the back, but we had to supply a choir. And nuns. And, and nuns. nuns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they weren't real nuns. No nuns were harmed. <laughs> But yeah, that's all part and parcel of the, the contractual agreement that, you know, it, it's, it's going to be feasible, logistic, and, you know, we can, we can make it happen, you know. Yeah, and the idea is to put on the best possible show. So, you know, if, if they can bring it and we can make it work and effectively fit it on the stage, we'll, we'll have it. You know, so we don't, we don't try and restrict their, their production in any way, shape or form. It's all about that, that delivery for, for the weekend for you guys. I think one of the biggest was King Diamond. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That, was that was huge, because it's, it's, it's not only what you see on the stage, it's yeah. the fact that they've set up early in the morning and everybody's got to work around them, uh, which and was a bit a of a, stage. it was a bit, yeah, we had to make the stage bigger. You didn't actually see that, but it's deeper. So therefore it takes up more footprint in the back as well. So, you know, everything has a, a knock on effect, but uh, yeah, that was a big setup. Yeah, well. it was, yeah. Um, I just wanted to change the subject slightly to beer because I'm getting a bit thirsty. To beer? Um, <laughs> I just wondered how you go about choosing um, the sheer amount of beers that you get in the VIP stage and obviously the increasing amount of beers in the normal stage. And if there was a chance that we could maybe have a poll um, to get some of the beers you know, that have not been to Bloodstock yet um, to sort of, yeah, arrive. <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, we, we actually do that um, on the VIP page. You remember on the VIP page? Right, okay, okay. Well, certainly on the VIP page, there's a poll that goes out there every year that basically says, you know, Alan puts out there, what do you want? Uh, you know, and, and if there's a call for something, and, you know, I mean, I'm not saying one person says it or a million people say it, if there's, if there's a reasonable call, he'll make the call himself and try and get it. But, you know, Alan, I'll pass over to you on, on, on the bar question. Yeah, well, what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We've, 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 we've got on some, uh, it's, a, it's a horrible job, but uh, someone has to do it, and it's, um, there's, a, there's a huge amount of beers out there, and there's a huge amount of beers that we can actually um, have at the festival, but um, uh, we've got to limit it to the amount of space and what you guys would drink, so someone has to go through the process of actually just uh, trying the beers and drinking them. And, 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 uh, sorry, it's just it's me. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we, we, we try and narrow it down. But what happens is um, uh, we do by and by the guys asking for, for bands. You know, if you've got something out there that you want, then let us know, and we'll try and get it. Within reason, we'll try and get anything. Um, the, the 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 market, as with anything, changes. And um, there's a question about low alcohol. Low alcohol, low alcohol beer volumes in the UK at the moment are dramatically increasing on a small scale. But these days, the uh, flavours and beers, uh, different ciders. The amount of cider flavours these days is just ridiculous. I think last year we had about 30 at Bloodstock. So from mango and strawberries and rhubarb to black currants, whatever, ginger and chilli, Coca-Cola. We try and get as much as we possibly can, but um, uh, you know, a large range, but within reason what people will, will like and drink. So, but if you've got anything out there, please let us know. We can we'll get on with it. I, I have to drink it first, though. If you do compare the beers as well, or the drinks generally available at Bloodstock compared to a lot of festivals, you do get a lot more choice. You know, yeah, I mean, it, it is very much around trying to be, you know, if, if we or you know we're all fans, what would what do we you know what would we like? And that's what we try and do. You know, what do we want in there? We want choice. We want quality. You know, we we wouldn't, for argument's sake, and I'll name them. We wouldn't put Tuborg in because it's a festival beer that it's cheap. You know, it's not it's not the best beer in the world. So when we do put beers in there, we try and think, you know, are these a good quality that, that people are going to enjoy? And you know, the last few years with partners we've had, the response back from you guys have been really good. So that you know, we'll we'll keep investing in that. And and uh, you know, like Alan said, if you've got something, then let let us know. And we'll try and find it. Uh, hello, uh, we're all aware of the amazing work that you do with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation and the time and effort that you put into supporting that charity. Um, I work for a, a local homeless charity and I wondered whether you'd ever consider um, like helping a local charity out, something that wouldn't detract from the work that you do with Sophie Lancaster. So um, for saying like a food and clothing donation drop, um, at this size. Yeah, we, we already do this actually. Um, we work with the council and um, every Monday after the festival they actually come and collect all of the unused food from the market traders, all of the artist catering that's not been used and that is all donated to the homeless um, within that local area. So that is a, an initiative that we work with the council for. But yeah, it's... Which council is that you It's South Derbyshire. Right. Okay. Yeah, again, it's probably one of those things we don't shout loud enough about because you didn't know about it. So yeah, we, we probably should, after the festival, you know, I guess list the kind of things there's an event that we do locally to support the local economy. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's a festival isn't just about people turning up that weekend and, you, you know, you're in a field and you're out, you're out of everything. It's the transport, it's the hotels, it's, you know, the infrastructure for all the local, local sort of shop owners and everything as well. Everybody feels the benefit of, of an event, you know, like, like Bloodstock. And certainly with the charity work that we try and do, it's difficult because there's so many worthy charities out there. You know, who do you pick and who do you say no to? We do try and mix it up a little bit now as well. So uh, we are we are changing that, aren't we? Can I just say something? On yeah, of course you can. Um, one thing, it, it, now's a good time, uh, place, isn't it? We, we've um, supported Teenage Cancer Trust, as you, you all know, for many, many years, and we've raised a, a lot of money with everybody's support for that. Um, this year, um, and we're, I think we're about to announce it next week, um, our PR lady at the back is nodding her head. Um, and we're actually changing to Young Minds, which is a, a young mental health charity, which I think is something that affects everybody at some point of their life. Everybody knows somebody that's um, been affected by mental health issues. So that's our new focus over the next 12 months at least, to try and kind of raise their profile and just show all the good work that they do as well. So um, press release goes out next week for that one. Okay. <laughs> Going back to the bar, um, <laughs> can we get some more Hobgoblin IPA in it on this year, please? Did it run out? Right, it's horrible. It, it was in the first year's out, Hobgoblin IPA, last year, and there was a limited supply. So by Friday night, uh, I realised I've got a problem. And uh, we got another order in on Saturday morning, so we had to reduce it from you know, five bars to four to one bar in the end. So, so yeah, yes, it will be, but it was a limited supply last year. Yeah, it was their first. It was their first actual year of doing IPA yeah. for festivals, effectively. Um, and we we were the I think we were the first or second festival yeah. in the UK to physically get it. And it was on a limited supply of what was available, so we just didn't anticipate it would go in a day. That was all. So yeah, there's definitely more coming this year. This is uh, reminding a little bit when you were just talking about the actual production of shades. 
And I think it's brilliant that Bloodstock can have all these really cool, fancy, fiery things and firework things. But is there any possibility, if there is going to be pyro or fireworks, for it to be announced in advance, either on the Facebook page or with the Rock Sock? Because mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm not the only person that's maybe got like SPD or something like that, that these things, <coughs> as fantastic as they are, if we don't know about them, they scare the shit out of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any advanced warning would be really, really helpful and very much appreciated. Yeah, take have you written that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, take it on board, you know, and, and yeah, we can certainly do that. There's no issue with that at all. Uh, it's difficult because sometimes yeah. we don't get everything as quickly as we would like it from the bands or from their production mm -hmm. people. But as soon as we do, we can certainly let you know that there will be pyro yeah. or, or, or whatever. Yeah, can go on the app, can we, as well? Yeah, we, we're looking at redeveloping the app. Um, if it's not this year, it'll certainly be for next year. So again, we can put notifications where we can on, on places like that as well. So yeah, don't get the Bloodstock app. Download it because it's free. You might as well. flash up on the big screen as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good idea. And we can just add it onto the stage um, times on the laminates just to say yeah. pyro. Yeah. For each band, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Rather than the compass as well. Rob, yeah, yeah. So yeah. The next show yeah. contains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you said that reducing plastic waste was a big priority for you, but have you got anything else in place to reduce the amount of waste <coughs> that's just left on the campsite and maybe donating the tents to charity or something after? Yes, again, very, very valid point and it's something that, that is really close to us. What you guys don't tend to see is the amount of work that goes in after the show for the clean-up. And again, we've, we've sung about the, you know, the stage crew is doing a great job, the clean-up crew is doing an amazing job. Mm. Anything we can do to reduce that, because the cost of that is, is, a, is horrific. Um, for us to get that cleared up, because we have to return the site to how we found it, uh, which pretty means every single bit of rubble, rubbish, whatever has to go. Um, we are looking at ways, and we've, we've looked around and we're speaking to people at the moment, Rachel's doing a lot of work on this behind the scenes to sort of look at ways we can reduce that, that campsite rubbish, because I, I, I made the mistake of going down to the campsites uh, about three years ago. I've never done it. I've never done it. I went down to see, have a look, I thought I'd have a look Monday morning. I actually thought there'd been a riot it, it was it was really bad, you know. I thought there'd been fights and grenades had been going off and all sorts. It was horrific. Never seen it. So it was a big eye opener for me. Um, and then I think last year there was loads of stuff going around the internet from different events uh, about how bad <coughs> campsites were. So we're we're making a concerted effort. But again, a lot of that is coming down to the support we get back. We can supply bin bags. We can we can do whatever you want us to do. But it takes whoever's out there in the fields to actually play their part and, and use those bin bags and bring them back. We don't want to have to mandate financially some way of doing this if we can, you know, if we can get away with it. It just needs people to support and, and help us. Um, just on that issue as well, we are going to be working with Coca-Cola this year, who we worked with last in 2008. Was it eight? Yeah. Um, so what's going to happen with any of the um, plastic bottles that we have across the whole site, which will be the Coca-Cola bottles, we're looking, and I'm working on this at the minute, to um, try and secure 30 to 40 volunteers um, for the festival that will basically have incentives to go and collect all the, the plastic on site. And then on the Monday, Coca-Cola will actually come and collect all of that plastic waste, which is recyclable, take it back to their site. And then within six weeks, those plastic bottles will be back into circulation again. So it's not single use, it's basically back into the market rather than into the oceans. Um, but yeah, it is a very big area that we're looking at at the moment, so um, just watch this space, we're working on it right now. <laughs> I appreciate the answer to this to do with footfall and layout of the arena, but me and my ginger brethren, we suffer from uh, <laughs> sunburn. <laughs> and it's August, and we burn, and we want to watch the bands. Is there any way that you could provide an additional shelter that allows you to watch the bands on the big screen, you know, it's out of the way, so we can actually sit there in safety and comfort without burning ourselves constantly. Hoodies? No? <laughs> it's a real difficult one because you've, yeah. got, you've got crowd movements and things like that, and, and as we know, the metal crowd like to do the odd mosh pit. Um, putting up a structure kind of near the front of the stage would or, or even at the back though because again we put on a, a you know one of the headliners you see the crowds that go right the way back um we've tried to remove things like chairs out of the main yeah. part you know and, and again that creates its own problems because people do like to have a sit down and we're, we're famous for allowing that to happen which isn't an issue but we're just trying to sort of manage the, the sort of area around the stage to make it as, as sort of i guess clinical as possible to avoid any injuries 
um, putting in a structure that doesn't necessarily need to be there for a lot of people could cause an issue. If there's another way of doing it, we'll certainly have a look. Yeah, I just think of like a, you know, one of those large sun, you know, like the, um, the Red Bull tent, yeah. where people go underneath that, and, and literally people will yeah. cram under the Red Bull tent. Um, it's health and safety. Yeah, yeah. Sun. It, it is, it is a health like and safety that. thing. I mean, yeah. with a yeah. Red Bull tent, we have to be very careful because it's wind. Yes. So, if, you know, we've, we've had it before where, and, and a few years ago, we had the back end of one of these American hurricanes. Yeah, on a Sunday, we Sunday, had to yeah. take the Red Bull tent down, we had to take the Red Bull wigwams out of the, the areas down. One of them blew over, caught us unawares. You know, so when, you, when you're putting in another structure, it's something that has to be monitored and managed. Um, we're, not, we're never saying never, it's certainly something we'd have yeah. a look at. I just think additional shelter for people, even if it isn't anywhere near the stage, just somewhere for people just to get out of the sun for 15, 20 minutes, you know, promote sun safety, you know, reduce skin cancer. I yeah. think something like that, I, I understand that it's difficult because you've only got a certain plot yeah. and it's about foot full, but just try and promote something that allows people just to get out of the yeah. sun for a little bit. I mean, we do have, obviously, with the, the Sophie Tent, the New Blood stage, the Strong Men, Rock Society, Lemmy's Bar, yeah. VIP Bar. There's, there are a lot of tent structures which we do try and put out there. We put the Red Bull Wigwams out in the arena, again, for, for people that, whether it's raining or whether it's too sunny, to sort of try and have a little bit of shade. It'd be great if we could just do the whole thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> have hard, but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go, yeah, yeah. 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 Then we'll upset them people then as well, aren't we? So. <laughs> but, uh, take it on board. It kind of follows on in a way from that, but actually from a campsite um, point. For the last two years, I've fought with security about the gazebo rule. Um, mostly two years ago, we actually brought a gazebo from the camp shop and then got told to take it down. Um, but it's actually from bloodstock and go from blistering sunshine to torrential rain, just like that. And I can appreciate it's to do with space in camps, but actually last year with the opening of the new campsite, there was still a lot of spaces and we've still been told to take down a gazebo when the campsite's not open and you're still out in that blistering sun or in the rain. Is this something that could be re-evaluated? We, we do look at that every year. You know, a lot of it, again, I think if you go year one, you realise, God, there's loads of room. Next year, I'm bringing a villa. You know, and, and people turn up with little castles and, and east wings and west wings, you know, for two people. So it's very, very difficult to sort of manage, manage and, and be able to sort of say, how much room you will or won't have in the campsite. So we try and say, look, on Thursday, let's get everybody in through the gates, get them set up, you know, and, and if there's room, when everyone's in, or certainly when the majority of people in, yeah, fill your boots, put one up, no problem at all. But it's very, very typical. You see a lot of tents that they make themselves a little village green, you know, little barbecues going off and everything else, and we do provide the barbecue areas, but it's, it's trying to be fair to everybody that there's, there's enough room that everybody can really get, get camped up comfortably without being sort of stuck in a fire lane or, or anywhere else they shouldn't be. And camping with the friends, because a lot of people do like to camp together. So um, I'd love to say, yeah, come and put up whatever you want and, and, and you know, do that. But, and we don't want to be the bad guy with it. We're just trying to say, look, just be, be conscious of other people that, that want to get in and get camping. It might just be coordinating that more security because we were still being told in the evenings as well to take it down. So we're on. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we as you know, we do talk to security quite often. We've had a big briefing with them at the end of last year, ready for this year, and there are some new, implement new implementations coming in with the communication channels between you know, all departments as well. So when we do make that ruling, we'll make sure that they do know Thursday night, this is, this is what we've agreed with everybody fan-wise, so there aren't any grey areas. But you know, if there are, do feed them back to us on the weekend. Don't wait till the following week and go away all disappointed. We are walking around, as hopefully some of you may have seen, throughout the weekend, you know, grab us or, or you know, grab Simon or somebody, or go to T Lisa in the Rock Society, Lisa and Lee, make the comment, they'll feed it straight back. And if there's an issue, we'll deal with it there and then. I have one more question that was uh, written down. Um, they're asking whether or not they could ask about the provision of mobile networks and Wi-Fi across the site. And uh, is there any plans to roll that out for this year's festival? Uh, yeah, basically. Um, mobile networks are a bit different because ultimately it depends how many people of one particular network are in. Cells, the way that they work, they only have an allowance of so many people using a cell network at any one time. So if there's loads of let's say you all turn up with Vodafone, you might struggle. You know, if there's a mix of varied phone networks, you'll be fine. On site Wi Fi, we are kind of looking at um, rolling out a public Wi Fi this year. Don't know how it's going to work. It's not going to be expensive to enroll onto. We've got 
fibre optic now going into the, the, the grounds around the site and then there's going to be relays positioned around the, the, the arena, the campsite. The guy that we're working with this year is actually looking to try and roll it out across the whole site. So whether you're in the arena, the campsite, wherever you are, other than the car parks, I'm afraid. But logistically, trying to do as, as much coverage as we can and we're just going to test it this year, see how it goes and then if it's successful we'll roll it out uh, even further for next year. But we are doing some testing I think May time with, with the site um, as well to see if it does actually give him the coverage that we need. But again, that's also down to bandwidth, depending on how many people are going to jump on it. What we don't want to do is, is say, yeah, we can give you public Wi-Fi, no problem at all. Everybody buys it and we just completely use the bandwidth up in, in 10 minutes effectively and nobody can get on. Because the last thing you want is to pay for a Wi-Fi network you can't use. So it's got to work and that's, we've got to test it first. So a lot of things have been added to the site over the last few years, things like fun fairs, things like strongman, things like the medieval combat. Are there any things you guys would love to bring into that that's not bar or band related so far? What do you want? Fire pit. What, in the arena? Yeah. Like just a big hole with fire in it. <laughs> <laughs> would that not be a little dangerous? Yeah, health and safety say no on that one, I think so. <laughs> They still go. Yeah, but Hellfest is that big. <laughs> of course, yeah. Oh. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. You go to I was going to say, a lot of the sites do things like, they've had things like um, Fatal Soccer, things like Absorbing, even some places have done things like Nerf Wars and things like that. They've actually had arenas set up for that now, so the festivals have gone for that side of things. Oh, the Nerf War, yeah, no, no, to be fair, that we are looking at things like that to sort of do different things and getting these ideas in from you guys again is is pretty important so you know we'll take that on board and if there's something we can do yeah we anything that's that's fun that's safe we, we're up for yeah inflatable obstacle course yeah you see i like that idea yeah bring your yeah. Bring your yeah. Bring your <laughs> no. i'm just mulling over that idea of bloodstock nerf wars that's, that's, that's amazing yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, basically, any, anything we can do that's going to sort of add entertainment, and that was what I was saying earlier on. If there's an idea out there, we'll, we'll try and make it work if it's possible. Uh, question for me. Um, I think the art gallery is really good. Is there any theme for this year? Uh, that's a poor question, that is. There's always a theme. You just necessarily don't know what it is until we get there, but... <laughs> It's it is a secret. He likes surprises. I do, yeah. Don't even tell us anything. Um, it, I think last year we sort of had, uh, what was it last year? Was it the Judas Priest Wall and, and everything else? So yeah, we, it, we, Paul does try and look at a theme, but it's, it's, I guess with any artist, it's all sort of muddled and juddled up there and, and just sort of takes some deciphering and that tends to come quite late. Um, but as soon as we do know what that is, we'll make sure you know. And we put that out via uh, Michelle in the press release as well. So. Can I ask a question, please? No. no. Just a bit of light relief from each of you. Just your, sort of a funny anecdote, the funniest thing that's happened at Bloodstock that the majority of people might not have heard about and obviously remember you being filmed. <laughs> Can you not come up with a better question? <laughs> um. No. <laughs> I don't know. A funny anecdote. Oh, I don't know. We, oh. You should have given us preparation time on that one, Paul. Yeah. I'll think then. Yeah. Come back later. I'll give you we'll the, come back on it. We'll come back yeah. on it. Yeah, I'll give you the Devin story. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'll think of one. Come on, carry on. As you were. But not now. Can I mention one? Yeah, go on then. Recently, so, well, not recently, but at, at Catton Hall, um, yeah. Band having all their light bulbs removed from their <laughs> dressing room. <laughs> That was funny. No, well, I won't mention the band. We, yeah, we did. <laughs> no, not we. Not no, we. no, no. I, I, I got very annoyed with a band who was very disrespectful to the festival and the way they were behaving. And the staff. And the staff, which I and we won't tolerate. So said band um, had a dressing room full of their rider and all the things that they requested. So whilst they, I was waiting for bands to go on stage. So you're upstage, you don't know any, the band then doesn't know what's happening in their dressing room. So we all rushed into the dressing room. I completely cleared their dressing room of all their rider. 
all the nice things that they thought they'd get back to. So they had a, nothing in the dressing room. Uh, and light bulbs. I took the light bulbs out. <laughs> and I left them with half a bottle of water. So yeah. when they got back to the stage, when they got back to the dressing room, I made sure the band that was in the dressing room next to them were having the time of their life. <laughs> which would then seem worse. It was a bit of karma on them because they were... They were a bit naughty. They were a bit yeah. naughty. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was quite fun. Yeah. It was fun seeing us all like, you know, traipsing into the dressing room, pulling all this gear out. That was hilarious. Yeah. <coughs> See as well. That's very rare though. Yeah, it is rare. We don't do that. <laughs> That's not a thing that we do, by the way. I think that was a one-off, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 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 Yeah.
So yeah. that is the one probably festival that we will all go to because... It's so close. Yeah. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest, the fact that it's like three miles from our house is pretty handy. <laughs> Have you ever actually had to actively keep bands apart because they don't like each other? Yes. Yeah. We just don't book them on the same day. And have you had incidents? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, uh, but we, we manage it, we do to be fair, we manage it well. And I sometimes also get in the band booking process. Yeah, bands that out, will not, I've had emails from agents that say my act will not play if that band is going to be even on site. So even if you're, you know, they're a half a mile away in the distance and they don't see each other, because we know that they're there the same day, we don't want to play. So, yeah, you do get it. We've never had touch one, I don't think, any major incidents. We've had, no, we've had a band, sort of, you wouldn't know, but the band actually pulled out before we could announce them. You remember? I'm not going to say it. No, I'm okay, okay, go. But there was a band that pulled out because another band was on the bill. Oh, yeah. yeah, as soon as they found out, which is kind of like, you know, God, guys, you know, we've got a job of work to do, you know. But yeah, it, it was it was the case, I guess, feuding ex-members, etc., etc. it all gets kind of precious, but, yeah. Didn't we have at one point um, an act that refused to have any ex-members? Or family. Oh, yeah. or, family. or family. Or family, yeah. Or family. No family members in the arena. <laughs> there he is. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He got a bald head with a beard. He's terrible. Oh, no. But no, that, that was serious. That was that was actually part of the contract that he couldn't have any previous members of said band and any family members that might have been related to said band yeah. in the arena. He would, they wouldn't have it. So as you can see, booking bands is dead easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a balancing act. Hi. <laughs> OK. Any more? Yeah. Any more? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just need a drink in a minute. And um, what's been your biggest like oh shit moment where you thought you just want to throw in the towel? I've oh, done with it. I've got this. I've got this. For me, <laughs> no. For me, I think it was it was no. It wasn't really on throwing the towel. An old shit moment was when we had the stage leaning over once. Yeah. Main stage, one of the first open airs yeah, we did. Yeah. Hit it light. got hit by lightning. I heard about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the crowd thought it was part of the show. <laughs> I think he said we can't control the sky, but apparently we can. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was quite scary. And, and when you sort of look at the stage and it's doing that, <laughs> you think, oh shit. But it, it stayed up, so that was alright. That was my kind of oh shit moment, but it wasn't finished. But Rachel's got one, apparently. My oh shit moment is when I highlighted a health and safety issue at the back of the main stage when I reversed my van into a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> and needless to say, the entire Bloody crew were there with the cameras, cameras. <laughs> and it was on Facebook before I got out of the van. <laughs> so yeah, that was my oh shit. Rachel, you get to celebrate the anniversary of every year. I think generally our biggest oh shit moment was 48 hours before the, oh, the festival was supposed to start. Oh, yeah. We actually had no main stage, no PA, no lights for two stages because the Arctic had crashed on the motorway. Allegedly. Or so we Allegedly. Um, so we had to source everything within 48 hours, and that was our biggest ocean. Sophie and New Blood. Yeah, but we did it. We did it. And God knows how, but we did it, didn't we? Wow. So yeah, that was, that was fun. I think I'll put that out in my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Of the yeah, trailer. literally 48 hours before we were starting, I was looking at the Sophie tent. There was a bunch of crew but no staging, no lighting, no PA, no nothing. And uh, yeah, he's on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bad times. What we got there? Yeah, I know some bands are risk assessed before they go on. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it who's been the one that's needed the most extra Which security or? Oh, security? Yeah. Or just- We're time. More management. <laughs> 
uh, were tame were a handful <laughs> last year. Not necessarily in the respects of <laughs> who and what they are. They're great guys, if not slightly edgy. Um, <laughs> but kind of um, production-wise, that was that was you know a health and safety nightmare. It's especially because they wanted it to be in the tent. And you know, flames and tent, it just it sent me into a parallel universe of nightmare. <laughs> but yeah, they, you know, they, they were great guys, and, but we do have to be really rigorous, you know, and you wouldn't believe the amount of fire marshals at the side of the stage. I was, I was all over the place, it was a nightmare. But it got there and it looked great. In fact, I got a text from you, didn't I? Saying, looks great. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Any more? I'm back on the left, Rob. Come on, Rob. Get on with it. <laughs> Getting old, it's this bad eyesight. <laughs> so I've known a lot of weird ones through. Um, one of the get us way a few of my friends to find out. Are there any plans to improve or expand some of the site facilities? Things like showers, they're brilliant. They're better than pretty much any festivals we've seen, but sometimes it's used for three hours. <laughs> Some festivals have things like the uh, luxury loo we can pay for the for the extras. I wouldn't plan to bring those kind of phrasing. If we get the suggestion, we'll definitely look at it. Um, it's one of those things where it's balancing the budget. I mean, we can have as many toilets as you like, but your ticket price will go up to have a posh loo. It, that is the long and short of it. So it's Ooh. making sure... A bit harsh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, that sounded a bit harsh. Basically, we can provide anything, but everything costs. Ooh. So... What I mean is a lot of festivals, things like now and the others, you can actually buy in advance, you know, we've got luxury loos and all the others, where you can actually buy a wristband in advance of that. So I think first one, they charge like 20, 25 pounds. I know a lot of people I've seen on the forums, a lot of Facebook groups, have said they would happily pay that for things like Bloodstock because they know they'd have those kind of facilities. They'd happily pay for that extra wristband mm -hmm. as an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to be fair, actually, so would I. Um, then that's the kind of thing that we'd look into. If it can be um, subsidised, if it can be the cost can be covered, then if people want it, then yeah, well, we'll definitely look at that. Can ask a question, can't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have we have done the. Um, what were, what were those ones you had to climb that ladder to go to? Uh, Torpedo toilet. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. Disco toilet. No, the. Um, the you said yeah, 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 yeah. You threw in a hole, big hole. Um, they, I mean, they were they were good, but again, it's they they were. They were <laughs> My favourite no, festival experience. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. They do an award at the festival as the best toilet, so, you know. But no, things like that, again, they are, they are a bit different from the normal porter toilets that, that we tend to bring in, but it's just down to what, what the fans want and what they're prepared to sort of, you know, if they want to pay a little bit more, we never ask the question, yeah, because we, we want to put a basic level of facility in as best as we can. You know, we've, we've done it before where we've changed the toilets from, from one contract to another, and, and the, the experience was in our opinion, terrible. And I think in the fans' experience, terrible. So, you know, we'll always look at trying and give the best possible experience for, you know, without increasing any costs. And that's the big thing for us, is not to increase the cost for you wherever we can do. So we work very, very hard with, you know, the bars and, and with every facility we have to keep those costs as, as low as possible. Okay, any more? Um, I think we're going to put this year, aren't we? Really, Phil? No, this year? Yeah. yeah. Um, when playing 2009, they got a bit of yeah grief. Uh, I haven't seen anything on that level since. Do you reckon the fans have matured a bit since back then? Of a fashion? I think in any any experience where you've got a, a lot of people, you always get an idiot or two. Um, we were gifted with a particular idiot that year. You know, who, who, who to be <laughs> fair decided that that was a good thing to do. In our, I suppose, own admission, those probable cricket-sized suites shouldn't have been on sale. Um, and they were quickly taken off sale. And we do make sure there's now a list of excluded items that, that are available, if you like, for us to facilitate that type of behaviour. Um, but, but generally, I think the crowd for Bloodstock are really well behaved, better than most other events and festivals that, that we've been to and, and that people tell us as well. A lot of our vendors tell us how great the fans are. You know, and that's, that's testament to the type of person that turns up to, to a metal show. You know, they aren't idiots in general. You know, the odd one escapes and gets in, but you know, try and find <laughs> it. Gets in. Add to anything? No, no. Thank no, you. try to add well, anything? No, oh, good. Pretty cool with that. Yeah. Any more? Okay. 
Anything at all you want to ask? Now's the time. Uh, you said on the live stream earlier this year that you'd ask, can Sabat start playing an additional set as a Bat Sabbath? Bat Sabbath. He made me ask that question. <laughs> I asked on the stream. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Is it happening? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know yet. I'd love to think so. I'd love to think so. Again, that's a band that's not played before. <coughs> I think it's an exciting sort of addition mm. to the fest. And it brings, it brings a slightly different demographic in as well. And I think if that slightly younger demographic go to Bloodstock, they're going to be happy with what they find, you know? And if that works with, you know, introducing them to hypocrisy, metal church, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that they may otherwise have not seen, and then they latch on to that, and then they want to come back, and we're all doing a, you know, it's all a learning thing, I guess, you know, so Cancer Bats, Bat Sabbath, that'll be a cracking set. Mm. We'll wait and see what they're going to do. It'd be nice if they did. I have another question. Uh, we saw Vicky get on uh, one of the Ferris rides, one of the fairground rides with uh, a J Jaster and Friends, I believe. Yeah. yeah. He got on the ride and looked really scared and then jumped off. Is, <laughs> is there a funny story behind that? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He edited this bit from his little thing, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did, yeah. So we did this, um, I don't know if you've ever seen Jaster's show, does um, Metal Dudes doing non-metal things. If you haven't seen it, he's done two shows so far. Watch it. So one of them last year was at Bloodstock on the Ferris wheel. Now the funny thing with the Ferris wheel is early that day, Rachel and I have been on, so which created a horrendous panic attack for me as I was going round because it was. I don't know if you've ever been on the Ferris wheel, but it's quite wobbly. So as I got to the top, as we were coming back round, obviously I sort of said to the guys, I just say, can you stop the wheel because I want to get off. And he was like, no, it goes around three times. <laughs> so, Jaster then decided that with um, Dino and who else Kirk. we have, Kirk and everybody else, we're going to do this. May I say, Kirk is an absolute Legend. badass. Yeah. <laughs> there is nothing that that guy won't do. So, Jaster was going to get onto the Ferris wheel. And if anybody saw, he then put his foot in and went, oh shit, no, this is too scary. Got off. Yeah, so you saw that. So, he edited that out of his um, Metal Dudes Doing Non Metal Things. I, and he was like, oh, that's way too scary. Whereas Kurt was just like, bring it. And Kurt also took his top off and got on that, I don't even know what you call the ride, the one that propels you. Yeah. And he, yeah, he was like, he got his mobile phone and ice cream. He was like, you can eat an ice cream when you're being propelled in the air, can't you? And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and there was nothing. I mean, that guy, I have to say, and we all said this, I have never met anyone as Fearless. He's great. He was unbelievable. So yeah, Jaster bottled it. <laughs> but one more thing about those three. Um, one of my best moments from the festival last year was actually watching them watching Mr. Big on stage. You know, we're talking we're talking people who've play, played some of the most aggressive metal bands out there, and they're just singing along to every single Mr. Big song. <laughs> absolutely worshipping Paul Gilbert, so uh, yeah, that's one of my favourites. Have you guys ever been starstruck? A lot, yeah. Why? A hell of a lot. Why who? Oh god, um, first time I met Lemmy, it's a bit like, whoa. Um, Alice Cooper, Dee Snyder, Dee Snyder. I think a lot of the time it's, it's, it's a lot of the bands you know we, we these these are bands that same as everybody else you know we've grown up listening to um and when you get them on the stage it is that kind of whoa kind of moment you know and we get that all the time but you've got to try and see past that so we try and sort of numb ourselves down to it a little bit but sometimes it's really difficult to do and, and you know we're in the presence of as we call them gods mm. you know and, and that's how we feel you know but we just try not to be Three-year-old little girls when they're all walking past, you know. So. <laughs> at least four-year-old little girls. Four, at least, yeah. Um, you, you meet so many bands nowadays, not so much. Two people that have gone to pieces. One, I met Dio at Sweden Rock. Rock mess, terrible. And the other one was Brian Blessed. <laughs> Seriously, I met Brian Blessed at the Golden Gods, and I was just talking crap. <laughs> And then the Gordon's alive. Yes, yeah, yes, mate. Yeah, all right. Whatever. Job done. Honestly, they're the only two people, really. The rest of them, it's, you know. Yeah, Devin was, was, was interesting. 
Um, but yeah, you, you know, at the end of the day, then yeah, Dio, to, Dio to, was special. Wow. I think it's good to be in a privileged position as we are that we we do get fortunate enough to meet a lot. Um, but you know, we we're still we don't just sort of barge into the dressing room. Like, How you doing? We're here. You know. We wait outside the same as everybody else most of the time. <laughs> yeah, not who was that? <laughs> Simon. Uh, but, you know, it, it is great to be able to be in a position that we are, and that's why we love the signing sessions as well, to sort of be able to do the same thing, and we try and encourage, um, you know, through Chris and his team that sort of work in the signing tent, as many people as possible to go into the signing tent and for the bands to get involved and do that as well, because I think that that's a really great moment for, for a lot of people, and, and we're, we're among those people that enjoy it. Well, well, not a surreal thing, but um, when I was 15, 16, I was probably a massive Ugly Kid Joe fan. Like, I can't even tell you how much I worship that band. I've got photos of me being 13, 14 with t-shirts. So this year, um, when I'm backstage and Whitfield Crane just pops up, he's like, hi, you know, your festival's great. The 15-year-old me came out and was like, oh my fucking God, Whitfield Crane's <laughs> talking to me. And it's that. You never want to lose that. Because I was just like, oh, your festival's right. really cool. And, and, and honestly, inside, I was 15 again. To have that moment of, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody had actually not told me he was coming, purely because they knew that I was a massive Ugly Kid Joe fan. So when he just sort of rocked up, I was like, wow. You know, so you do get those awesome moments that happen. I think it's cool to keep that as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. Isn't it? I, you know. Do you still get inspired by seeing metal bands and sort of meet and greets and, and, and signing sessions? I know I do. I, you know, in my veteran years, I'm still that metalhead, you know, will be forever in a day. And like that, you know, that's why, it, you know, as people that organise festivals and these guys at the front, we kind of thank you guys for, for being who you are and keeping the, the metal flag flying. So, you know, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I had it last year with, uh, with Judas Priest actually, because obviously we were hoping to interview them for Bloodstock TV. And, and Vicky saying that about the 15 year old, they were the first metal band that I listened to. So as soon as they got announced, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to get to interview Judas Priest. So that's how I opened the, the, the interview. Literally, it was 30 years to, to, the, to the year that I'd actually listened to them. So actually sitting there talking to the band. Unfortunately, I was one year out because Scott Travis joined the year after. So uh, I didn't get to talk to anyone that was actually on that album I got into, because Rob doesn't do interviews on gig days, so unfortunately we didn't get him. But, um, but yeah, for the, doing the interviews for Bloodstock TV, the first year I did it was just like, you know, like interviewing Anthrax and things like that. But you do sort of get a little bit, yeah. but you've still got that inner child in you all the time, where you're just like, oh my God, I'm talking to Testament. Paul. It's also yeah. balancing it with having to be professional at the time and place as well, isn't it? You know? Well, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> I try my best. Yeah. You know, a question I'd like to ask anyone that's here, and I know this is just going to get a wall of noise probably, but are there any bands that haven't played or are there any bands that you'd like to see return? Take the right. Toxic. Clutch. Sugar. Bars up. Clash. Clash. Sacred Red Fang. Red Yeah, you know. Necrogoblico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Side of the Moon project? Oh, yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In flames. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time. Devin. Yeah. Keep them coming. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is interesting to see a sort of consensus on what people want, you know? Halloween. Orange Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was coming from me. <laughs> Orange Goblin. Orange Goblin. Power trap every week. <laughs> 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 do you like we only do it once a year. Weekly events. <laughs> yeah, okay. Massacre. Massacre, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bloody Wood. Dying feet. Yeah, Bloody Wood. Are they actually gigging? Yeah, I've seen them actually doing, starting to do better. They've, they've got one plan. And I think Bloody Wood and Bloodstock can go together, sort of thing. Their and videos are brilliant. And their sort of like their music as well is very good. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they do like lots of things in mental health as well. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, well. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Vado. Yeah. The war zones in the VIP. Say again. The war zones in the VIP. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, weren't they good? Yeah, they were yeah. There's, there's a band that's taken off, right? 
Yeah, yeah. The Hugh. The Hugh. The Hugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the uh, Mongolian yeah. throat singers, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. The Hugh. Yeah, cool. You know, because they're, they're, they're ideas that you wouldn't necessarily get at a lot of festivals. So, but they're ideas that we take on board, definitely. <laughs> yes, mate. There you go. Hello, mate. Still sound crap on this, by the way. No, you sound all right. <laughs> Um, so we have um, the after party every night at the safety station. You look on the forums and people complain because they don't <laughs> want to hear walk, they don't want to hear just sound mad, etc, etc. In the VIP tent we get, you know, a lot of uh, the, the band members put on their own sort of DJ sets or whatever. Is there any sort of chance that for 95% of the people who actually pay for a ticket, who are out there not paying for VIP, could get one night that a band member could do a DJ set in the safety stage. And also, we do a lot of obviously metal for the masses, so we try and get people to obviously, you know, with yeah. their bands to, to, to promote their bands and to, to sign up to, to play arenas, you know, or sort of local gigs, etc. What about the people who, who are local metal DJs that they're in their bedroom and they're trying the hardest to actually become a metal DJ, but they've got no platform at all? Is there a metal to the masses DJ <laughs> event? Uh, <laughs> there, 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 there isn't. That people could actually you know, try and, and, and apply to do you know, an hour slot at... Um, it's, at it's all about, if I'm brutally honest, they've got to be good. I'm not good. No. Okay. <laughs> this isn't for me. So. All right. As you know, we changed it around. Sort of, um, the four DJs have sort of moved on now, and we've, we've changed it. it. It'll be changed again this year in respect of where we put the DJ desk. But guest DJs, yes. Yeah. Will we be bringing in sort of new blood DJs? You're saying, I guess. Yeah, I think there's a lot of talent out there. And there is the future generation. They they are there all the time, just yeah. promoting their their wares, and they've got nowhere to go. And I think that there's probably something you could tap into. I'm not I don't just, know how you do it. I don't know yeah, how yeah. you set it up, but there's a lot of creativity out there in the world. I'm not going to say no in any way, shape, or form. And if there is a way that we can sort of you know bring DJs through, great. But you said it yourself. They moan when you put decent <coughs> DJs up there, yeah. you know, or sort of established DJs, and Crusher, you know, so. <laughs> don't, don't, Crusher's great. <laughs> he, he's brilliant, he's brilliant. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we are gonna flavor it up again this year, and you know, sort of bring names, and maybe not such bigger names in, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll look I yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. talent out there. Let's tap into it. Certainly is. Yeah. So we are, we invite um, people to get involved in stop Radio as well. We've got yeah. people that send in just sets of music, like twenty minutes worth of them, and then just yeah. <laughs> yeah we, um, we're, we're always you know, the by the fans for the fans thing with stop Radio. We always want people to get involved in that. So anyone that wants to, you know, if you want to even interview a band, or you want to do do something like that, or you want to record, you know, twenty minutes of music with you talking in between, saying about the band, things like that. We also had um, the, well last year we had the Rock Society Recommends, which was just like, we invited the members of the Rock Society to record a, a bit about one of the bands that's been announced to sort of say, well, you know, if you haven't heard this band before, they are, I went to see them, so and so, and, and that's open to anyone really, because um, the idea with Bloodstock Radio wasn't really for me to be, to be doing it, the idea was for content to be coming from all over the place really, and it's ended up that I've been sort of producing it, presenting it, doing interviews with the bands and doing that all myself really. But it, I'm constantly putting it out there for people to, to, to want to get involved. So if anyone wants to get involved or know people that want to get involved, as I say, contribute music, features, anything. We've, we've, we've left it open to anything. Hatrum Acid Rain's a regular contributor about mental health and stuff like that. We've had one of the former Metal to the Masses bands came back with a, you know, advice for Metal to the Masses bands. And it's, it's anything really that would be of interest to, to, to Bloodstock listeners and Bloodstock fans that are, you know, of which I am one, which is why I try to put out content that is that is interesting to me so you know we have things on mental health we, we do obviously interview bands but we had the um the world metal congress a couple of weeks ago down in london we interviewed people down there and it's just basically anything that's of interest to, to you guys out there so yeah anyone wants to get involved in that then um, yeah get in touch can i just put this out um how many of you have actually listened to the bloodstock radio talk oh, Christ, that's, a lot. that's a fair few that's a fair few uh for those who haven't it's definitely worth a, worth a listen. Um, there is some really, really good stuff on there. 
I'm not just saying it because he's here. But uh, yeah, there is some really, really good stuff on there. Um, we've probably got time for a couple more questions, if, if anyone's still got any. Sound good? Yeah. Hi there, a bit of a silly question, but when it comes to toothpaste, do you squeeze in the middle or the end? <laughs> I'd say the end, but she'll tell you it's the middle. Anybody who does it from the middle needs shot. <laughs> that would be me then. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's no other way, you've got to squeeze from yeah. the end. Come on. You have to That's roll it up. No you don't. No you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's an end. <laughs> I'm going to think about that for a while. <laughs> cool. Any more? Yeah, so um, I, you guys probably don't camp anymore. Maybe you do. I don't know. But um, what would be the one thing that you would say would be the best item to take to a festival? Wet wipes. Wet wipes. Wet wipes, yeah. Who said Duct tape. <laughs> Not pigeon tape. Oh, we've been there for you. Pigeon tape. Yeah. Do you want to explain that one, Adam? No. <laughs> no, I think actually Simon can do this one because you were involved. You started that. Go on. So there was this lad I had on the crew. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to name names because he's a lovely lad, but he's not the brightest tool in the box um, or the sharpest tool in the box. And I had him running around site for about three hours um, looking for pigeon tape. <laughs> because we'd run out of duct tape and I had him going to Adam and then Adam was sending him to Beefy and then Beefy was sending him to me. And bless him, he kept going for three hours. <laughs> He actually, it, it ended up that Adam had some insulation tape and wrote on it, pigeon tape. <laughs> and gave it to this lad and he comes strutting back happy as Larry said, I found it. <laughs> Bless him. He drank well that evening, I'll give him that. So, yeah. It's not all seriousness backstage. <laughs> Bless him. That'll do. Okay. Any more? Yeah, I think we'll make this the last one. Make it a good one. <laughs> no pressure. No yeah, pressure, yeah. yeah. No pressure. Uh, on the subject of holograms, Lost in Line Touring with the... There's the answer already. It's a one. <laughs> it's a no. <laughs> uh, it's a big no. Um, I think it's distasteful. I don't think it'd be well received. I don't know how many people would want to see a hologram. I think it's... I just... It's just all the no. Um, I don't know what you guys think about seeing a hologram. Um, I can't think of anything worse than, for example, seeing Motorhead tour again with Lemmy as a hologram. I think that would, and I don't think Lemmy would like that. I just think, yeah, Al's shaking his head. No, it's a no for us. It sounds like the dragons. It's <laughs> <laughs> think about yourself. Ronnie's gone, but his music lives on. That's all I can yeah. say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's not right. It doesn't feel right. No. And it looks kind of odd. So I'd say no on every level. How about Death Club? Death Club? Death Club. Yeah. 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 Well, the whole show's a hologram. Well, they, I think they did have an idea of doing that. So <coughs> not having the cartoon members on stage as holograms and obviously. It's kind of different with Death Club, though, isn't it? That'd be amazing. Please do that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> It's, yeah. Just put it out there. <laughs> Death clock on the Sophie stage. Can you imagine that? Yeah. That'd, That'd be amazing. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Oh. Are we going to do this again? Just yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, for us, I think this, is, this has been a really valuable experience for us because then, you know, we get to meet you guys, which is really cool, and we get to answer some honest questions. You know, we, it's, we get all, all sorts of emailed in. There's lots of very vocal people on the forums and on the Facebooks and, and everything else, and we wanted to give them a platform. You know, and, and I think the success of today, and I hope you all agree, for us has been invaluable. We'll take a, take a lot away from that, and we'll make sure that you know, we get this unedited as, as we can do, to put pretty much every question out there so that everybody else can see what's being asked, and then maybe filter in or turn up themselves next time for, for a few questions. So from us, a huge, huge thank you to every one of you that's bothered to turn up today. Yeah. So, you know.
very frequent in the same instance. Yeah. Um, we thought we might, we might like to do something just to finish off. Has anyone seen the uh, competition that's been on the uh, Bloodstock Facebook page? About the Bloodstock screen? Yeah? <laughs> so, who's up for it? Yeah? All of you. All of you, right, okay. So, I'm, I'm going to count you in on a one, two, three, and then we have to do the loudest blood stop, yeah? Can we do that? Fingers and ears, Paul? So, one, two, three.